Nathaniel Dodson from tutvid.com with another Photoshop tutorial for you. Today we're going to talk about the load files into stack feature in Photoshop. If you've ever used Adobe Bridge, there's a feature in Adobe Bridge called uh, load images into Photoshop layers or something like that where basically you can select 5, 10, 20 images, whatever, and it loads them into one single Photoshop document with each image placed on, you know, boom, 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 its own layer. This load images into a stack feature in Photoshop is very similar. There's some other reasons why you'd want to do this, including but not limited to some of the stacking options in Photoshop. We're not going to get into stack modes and all that stuff in this tutorial. I'm actually doing a tutorial on that that's coming out in just a couple days, so hang tight for that. Uh, but for now, there's still a lot of stuff you can do with load files into Photoshop stack. Before we get into that, however, we've got a sponsor. April of 2016, GraphicStock.com is our sponsor for this month, and it's the Creative Rewards Month over at GraphicStock.com. Um, they've got a library of 300,000 plus vectors, illustrations, photos, all royalty-free stuff. Um, you can see here, I just searched for space, and I've got all this different stuff that popped up. Um, typically, it's 49 bucks a month for GraphicStock, but they're offering new members a, a deal. Six months for $39. $39 total for six months of access. You can download whatever you want for that thirty-nine uh, for that six months, excuse me. Um, and it's just a lot of really great stuff. There's so much stuff here. It's going to take your work to the next level um, if you don't have, if you're not using already good stock photography. It's going to help so much if you're creating templates or you're working on graphic projects for clients, uh, everything, you name it. Even down to logo design, there's all kinds of great stuff you can use for tracing shapes and getting ideas and you name it. Graphicstock.com, there's going to be a link in the description of this video. So let's get back to this. Up here under file, whoop, I made it go away. File scripts, load files into stack. We're going to choose use folder. We're going to go browse, and I've got a folder here called stack. Inside of the stack folder, I just have seven JPEGs, one through seven, as you see. I'm not going to attempt to automatically align source images. If the image is shot on a tripod, I'm not going to do it almost always. Um, I just don't like when Photoshop starts messing with trying to align source images um, unless it's something where I've tried to handhold something and I just want Photoshop to kind of like finish adjusting everything uh, when I know there's going to be little bits of variation in between the frames. If it's just going to be off a pixel or two here or there, I'll do that by hand. I would rather have, you know, kind of my control over that instead of letting Photoshop automate that. Uh, create smart object after loading layers. We're not going to do that, um, but this is going to get into a little bit of what we're going to talk about in a couple days about the stack modes in Photoshop. Um, this is why we would use the smart object feature. So it's not just here to be annoying and, and, you know, make you angry that smart objects exist or anything like that. We're going to hit OK. And Photoshop's going to take a second and process these seven different variations of this snowy image and give us a new Photoshop document. As you can see, here's our original image over here, this guy. And then here is our seven JPEGs all placed into one uh, Photoshop document. And sure enough, each image is on its own layer. So if you're doing some kind of architectural photography and you know you need the, the inside needs to be really bright and outside needs to be much darker, or you're doing one of those sort of like day to night composite images uh, when it comes to like the really amazing architectural photography, you got your camera locked down on a tripod for you know 12 hours or something crazy. Um, and you're going to shoot the morning light for the sides of the building that really look great with morning light. And you got the sunset sky and, you know, the great interior lights going on and all the beautiful ambient light from those beautiful times of the day for each of the parts of the building. And you need to mesh everything together. You can load all of your images quickly and easily into uh, one document by using the load files uh, as stack, load files into stack, I'm sorry, feature of Photoshop. So for the load files into stack script, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.